Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to see the packet tracer activity, designing and implementing a VLSM addressing scheme. Here is our objective of this packet tracer. In part 1, we will examine the network requirements. In part 2, design the VLSM addressing scheme. And in part 3, we will assign IP addresses to devices and to verify connectivity. We will go through the background. In this activity, we are given a slash 24 network address to use to design a VLSM addressing scheme. So based on a set of requirements, we will assign subnets and addressing, configure devices and to verify connectivity. We will come to part 1. Examine the network requirements. Determine the number of subnets needed. So you will uh, submit the network address at 10.11.48.0/24. The network has the following requirements. Here we can see that uh, the LAN ASW1 will require 14 host IP addresses. For ASW2 LAN will require 30 host IP addresses. ASW3 LAN will require 6 host IP addresses and ASW4 LAN will require 60 host IP addresses. So how many subnets are needed in the network topology? Right, we will see that. Come into the spreadsheet, here we can see our subnet table. So here we given the subnet description and the number of host needed. In a descending order, here we can see for the ASW4, uh, we needed 60. This is the maxim maximum number of uh, uh, host needed. And here we can see SW2 uh, 30, SW1 14, and SW3 6. And also we required a WAN link. Uh, uh, we required two number of uh, hosts. Now we will see the network address, first usable host address, last usable host address, and broadcast address uh, of each subnet according to the number of uh, hosts needed. We will come to uh, step 2. Determine the subnet mask information for each subnet. Which subnet mask will accommodate the number of IP addresses required for ASW-1? And how many usable host addresses will be uh, will this uh, subnet support? Right, we will uh, come to our uh, spreadsheet here. Yes, so for the ASW-1, the sub description, we need a uh, total number of uh, 14 hosts uh, in this uh, uh, subnet. Here we can see the details. So the network address is 10.11.48.96 slash 28. Uh, here we can see the first usable host address is 10.11.48.97 and the last usable host address is 10.11.48.110 and here we can see the broadcast address 10.11.48.111 uh, so the number of uh, usable IP addresses here are 14 now we will come to uh, B which is submit to mask will accommodate to the number of uh, IP addresses required for SW-2 uh, how many usable host addresses uh, will this subnet support right we will uh, come to our uh, spreadsheet here and here we can see for the uh, ASW-2 uh, we need the number of uh, hosts needed is a uh, 30 so here the network address is a uh, 10.11.48.64 slash 27 here we can see that the CIDR slash 27 that means the subnet mask will be 255.255.255.224 and here we can see the first usable host address 10.11.48.65 and here is the last usable host address 10.11.48.94 and here is the broadcast address 10.11.48.95 and here I mentioned the number of usable IP addresses are 30. Now we will come to uh, see which subnet mask will accommodate the number of IP addresses required for ASW-3. How many usable host addresses will this subnet support? Right, coming to our spreadsheet, here we can see that SW3. Okay, here uh, the number of host uh, needed is uh, 6 and here the network address is uh, 10.11.48.112 and here the first usable host address is 10.11.48.113 and here the last usable host address is 10.11.48.118 
and here the broadcast address is 10.11.48.119 also the number of usable IP address uh, are 6 now we will come to D which is submit mask will accommodate the number of IP addresses required for ASW-4 and how many usable host addresses will this uh, subnet support right uh, here is our uh, spreadsheet and here we can see the subnet description ASW-4 and uh, here we required uh, a number of host uh, is 60 and uh, here the network address is uh, 10.11.48.0 slash 26 so here we can see the CIDR is slash 26 so the submit to ask will be 255.255.255.192 and here we can see the first usable host address 10.11.48.1 and the last usable host address is 10.11.48.62 here we can see the broadcast address 10.11.48.63 and the number of usable IP addresses are 62 coming to E which is submit mask will accommodate the number of IP addresses required for the connection between building 1 and building 2 coming to the topology here we can see building 1 and building 2 uh, serial connection so here uh, in our spreadsheet here we can see the WAN link the number of host needed is 2 the network address so here we can see with the CIDR 10.11.48.120 slash 30 uh, that means the submit mask will be 255.255.255.252 also here we can see the first usable host address 10.11.48.121 and the last usable host address is 10.11.48.122 here the broadcast address is 10.11.48.123 here the number of usable IP addresses are 2 now we will come to uh, part 2 design the VLSM addressing scheme uh, step 1 divide the 10.11.48.0 slash 24 network based on the number of host per subnet yes we have seen that already we have done that use the first subnet to accommodate the largest LAN use the second subnet to accommodate to second largest LAN use the third subnet to accommodate the third largest LAN use the fourth subnet to accommodate the fourth largest LAN use the fifth subnet to accommodate the connection between building 1 and building 2 yes this is what we have seen in our spreadsheet so here we can see we given uh, the largest uh, subnet here 60 so in that order in descending order we noted that then uh, we got all the network address uh, for these uh, uh, subnets next is uh, step 2 document the VLSM subnets complete the subnet table uh, listing the subnet descriptions uh, here we can see that how we have to do that then uh, number of host needed the network address for the subnet the first usable host address the broadcast address uh, repeat until all addresses are listed so here is the subnet table and uh, we have uh, done here in our spreadsheet now we will come to uh, step 3 document the addressing scheme assign the first usable IP addresses to building 1 for the two LAN links and the WAN link assign the first usable IP addresses to building 2 for the two LANs link assign the last usable IP address for the WAN link then assign the second usable IP addresses to the switches assign the last usable IP addresses to the host yes, so we will uh, document these addressing schemes here we can see our addressing table according to the uh, addressing scheme mentioned in our uh, packet tracer activity the device interface and its IP address here we can see then the submit to mask also we can see the default gateway now we will come to uh, part 3 assign IP addresses to devices and to verify connectivity most of the IP addressing is already configured on this network implement the following steps to complete the addressing configuration so here we are going to configure IP addressing on building 1 LAN interfaces then configure IP addressing on ASW3 including the default gateway configure IP addressing on host D including the default gateway then finally we have to verify the connectivity you can only verify connectivity from building 1 SW3 and host D however you should be able to ping every IP address listed in the addressing table 
right we will assign these ip addresses uh, into this uh, into the respective devices coming to building one cli right enable configure terminal and we will go to the interface uh, gigabit ethernet zero slash zero and we will set the ip address uh, 10.11.48.97 and uh, here is a subnet mask 255.255.255.240 right now we will get the no shot command yes now we will do it on the other interface LAN interface so we have to go to the interface gigabit ethernet to zero slash one and we are going to set the IP address uh, 10.11.48.65 and uh, here the subnet mask is set to 255.255.255.224 now we will give the no shot command now we will uh, configure IP addressing on uh, ASW3 here we can see that ASW3 it switch so coming to CLI enable configure terminal we will go to the interface VLAN 1 now we are going to set the IP address uh, 10.11.48.114 and uh, now we have to set the subnet mask 255.255.255.240 now we have to set the default gateway so we have to exit here IP default gateway we have to give that is a 10.11.48.113 right I think we did not give the no shot command here in this interface so we will give that we will go to the interface interface uh, VLAN 1 and we will give no shot command yes now we will configure this uh, host D so coming to host D desktop command prompt oops we have to go to IP configuration so here is the IP address that is uh, 10.11.48.62 right here we can submit to mask we have to change this uh, default uh, submit to mask to 255.255.255.192 and now we have to give the default gateway I'm going to copy this address it's a 48.1 yes now we are going to verify the connectivity uh, we are we will uh, ping from uh, this host D to this uh, host A so we have to get the IP address of host A here we can see that right coming to host d command prompt here i am going to give a ping then the ip address wait for that yes we are getting the replay now we will ping from a host d to the switch asw3 so coming to command prompt here we are going to give a ping and the ip address of that switch waiting for the replay request timed out yes we are getting the replay so once more if we give you will get 100 percentage success right yes that's all in this uh, packet tracer activity here we can see the completion status 30 out of 30 so in this uh, we have seen uh, designing and implementing a VLSM Friends, if you have any doubt in this Piker Tracer activity, uh, please comment below. Also, if you like my video, give a thumb and don't forget to subscribe the channel so that you will get latest uploading video info into your Gmail. Thank you.